Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group weekly update for the week ending October the 7th, 2022. Well, the Fed policymakers have, you know, maintained their position that they are going to continue to increase rates until they get uh, downward moves on, uh, on the CPI and those inflation related uh, indexes that are their favorites that they want to go to. Okay, some analysts are saying that they're ignoring. So what we had this morning on uh, on, on Friday, October the seventh, was the uh, the labor reports on un new unemployment claims, and uh, those uh, show that there's unemployment is um, is three point five percent, which is an amazing number, but it's hot, hot, hot. Okay, that's a that's that's essentially historically uh, comparatively a full. Uh, full full employment for the nation, so the Fed hawks. So that made the markets go down because the Fed hawks are, are going to come in and say, "See, that's another indication that that inflation is still too high. We've got too much employment." That's just astounding, but uh, that's the way that it is uh, it, it going to be. And so, uh, as opposed to focusing on current yields, which on the two year are you know four thirty. That would that would match uh, the the, the uh, target that the Feds say that they want interest rates to be. Uh, the current yield on the ten year three eighty three as of the time of making this. So uh, that again would be really close to the Fed's target range, you know, around four four and a quarter or something like that. So if you if you average the the two ten, I mean, there's a forty four bip spread there, and so uh, you, you think that that would be sufficient, but no, it's not. So point is. Um, we've adjusted our models accordingly, and like I just told you last week, you know those those current levels uh, that you can see the S and P uh, likely to be headed for between now and the end of the year depends uh, on uh, well, they're going to be uh, down about ten to twelve percent uh, or more. I could make a mathematical argument to make the case for down thirty percent, down forty percent. Okay, just not. You know, maybe that's not likely, and it depends upon uh, your aggregate numbers in terms of earnings. But uh, uh, be that as it may, as it may, we won't get too wonky into that. I, I'm saying that we have to prepare for in the short term. Uh, you know, a down move of 10 to 12, uh, 15 percent, something in that, in that range. All right, just say 10 to 20, and, and then that way you get it covered. Uh, and our models are back tested, and 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 actually not only back test, but uh, actual results are coming in very nicely. That they're that they're uh, withstanding that pressure, smoothing the volatility, and actually returning positive uh, returns throughout that. So if you're losing money, sure need to call us, all right? Get on board. Our, our, uh, we're, not, we're actually uh, hugging the bear, okay, at this point. Uh, and, and that brings up a, a, an interesting book that I, I came across, and I thought I'd share a few thoughts on that article with you. It's a book by Elaine Fox, and it's called Switchcraft, okay? Put out by um, by Harper One, and it's uh, it's it's a new book, and she's a psychologist, a PhD. Talks about you know how to stay mentally flexible uh, and, and how to cultivate mental agility during times of uh, of change. Okay, and so she explores why we react uh, the way that we do to change and uncertainty and how to better manage it. And so a couple of those ideas are to view it like uh, a bag of golf clubs, and I love that analogy. And so we'll, we'll, that's the way we do our, our planning, our model planning. I'll tell you, financial planning. Uh, we use certain. We don't just use uh, a lot of people just come out with one club. Okay, gonna hit a driver on every shot. That's not gonna work out so well in the long run. Probably not very, not very efficient, not very elegant outcomes overall. Uh, or it's just like you can't use a wedge. Okay, actually tried that on a shorter course and just used a couple of wedges the whole day through. It just doesn't work. All right, need to have a full panoply of tools available to you. And so, so you could liken it, you know, to uh, liken the the skills or the mental agility necessary to manage uncertainty, change, and uh, and periods of market volatility. I would add, uh, so that you so that you can get through there by uh, you know using a number of different strategies. So you can uh, you can just recognize. You can start out by recognizing change is going to be unexpected sometime and and some things we can plan for so those things that we we prepare for in advance obviously but sometimes things are just a surprise and so it's a shock you gotta you, you gotta recognize that you know you're in a transition and now things are going to have to change and so 
you can also go into one of her one of her suggestions was that you know you can start building up your tolerance just the way that you would weigh it into a, a pool a swimming pool perhaps the water is a little colder than what you wanted or warmer than what you wanted you just seek out the small uncertainties and take tiny steps in there nibble that market risk until you're more comfortable with it and then you can go on you can also do um, uh, things that are like changing your perspective take another look at a problem uh, find something that uh, that's annoying to you and try to find something good about it that might come from it okay and then you can also brainstorm us this, this is how we, we build our models we brainstorm we back test a number of different tries and then, and then determine the best uh, best solution out there all right and so you can do the same thing in in in, in solving your problems or the change that's coming up is by by brainstorming a number of different ideas and that helps us move past worry repetitive worry is an easy trap to fall into i've always maintained that it's an indication of um just not knowing what you're going to do once you decide what you're going to do worry seems to dissipate right so worry can also be abused is that it makes you feel like you're doing something and in actuality you're really doing nothing but upsetting yourself so maybe instead of uh, you could also ask a different question and say instead of um, saying why is this happening say how can I change the situation and we're, we're moving it into the direction of uh, uh, you know a, a positive thing and moving towards a solution based direction as opposed to just a, a worry based or static stuck mode position all right hope that helps the weather's great in the greater Atlanta area go out and enjoy it get some of that sunshine and it'll help you stay happy. We know that happiness is the key to longevity. Till then, we'll see you next time.